everyone and welcome to the Fisher Creations podcast where I pull out one of my interesting knitting projects every time and talk you through the details. My name is Anna, you can find me as Obstie on Reverie and as Caledoniana on Instagram and I really love to hear from you and as my viewer counts are increasing slightly and I'm so happy about that. Thank you for everyone who checked me out and gave me a shot. Um, I really hope we can start to engage with each other and really get to talk about the projects I'm working on. And maybe you are working on, maybe you have worked from the same patterns and have experienced the same issues or whatever. So yeah, leave a comment below, leave a comment on Instagram, direct message me on Ravelry, I'd really love to hear from you. Um, <clears throat> I'm back from my conference, it was absolutely intense and exhausting and amazing and incredibly interesting and met amazing people. <coughs> and for some reason I feel like after speaking English for almost a week and speaking not a word of German, I really lost all ability to speak either language. So bear with me today. I, I hope it's acceptable. But really I, I feel like I can't speak English or German anymore. But back to topic, let's talk about knitting. I thought today we might actually talk about um, not one project but one type of project, which is cutterwork socks. As you might have gathered from my, my garment knitting, cutterwork is and will always be my first love in knitting. And um, socks are no exception. I do knit a lot of vanilla socks as well, just because I can do them while reading. Sorry, my neighbors are doing things and being my neighbors, as they always are. Um, yeah, well, I, I can knit vanilla socks while reading, and especially while reading on my computer, which I don't enjoy, so I do a lot of that. But I always think about colorwork socks, which I don't wear that much, because I'm just a little more precious about them, I think. But I just enjoy knitting them and usually do my own designs on them. And I think it just as with a vanilla sock, it is a process to get the right fit for you and the, the gauge you like. And usually in my socks I enjoy a very tight gauge, which is around 36 stitches per 10 centimeters um, on a vanilla sock, which means I knit them on 2 millimeter needles with uh, 72 stitches. And the same is true for color work socks for me, um, but it took me a while to figure out a way to knit them in a way that would satisfy me. So these are actually the first color work socks I ever made, or at least first all over color work socks. I had made some worsted weight socks that had just a bit of color work at the top of the leg, but I really don't count them. They are just a different weight and um, yeah. So yeah, these are my, my first proper color work socks. These are the Selby socks by Skane in it, as you will probably know because she's been all over the place. And, um, sorry, my, my, my nose is really itchy today. I have no idea why I'm sweating, as it always does. So, these were pretty much the first socks I ever knit toe up, because that's just the way she's written them. And I hate magic looping, but knitting the toe, toe up on DPNs is even more annoying, so I actually got a magic loop needle on in 2.5 millimeters to do the toe and then so I, I did the plain parts the toe and the, the heel and the cuff on 2.5 millimeters and had to go up to 2.75 for the color work because my feet are quite wide so Loki sorry Loki is eating my, my plants he's right next to you on the windowsill and I just rearranged all my plants and he is now trying to eat my one cactus. Why on earth? Why are you eating the cactus? It hurts. Yeah, now he's probably ashamed of himself and hiding on the radiator. Where was I? So yeah, my, my feet are quite, <coughs> quite wide. So I had to go up to 2.75 millimeters, which is one of my issues with the, these socks. They don't look too bad, but really it's quite a loose gauge for such a fine yarn. So, as I said, I usually prefer my socks be, to be knit at a very, very tight gauge, and this is really just too loose for my taste. It's a stitch count of 76, so just ever so slightly more than I usually use on the vanilla socks, so I really have to go up quite a few needle sizes to get a fitting sock um, without the stretch that a vanilla sock had, has, or would have. So, yeah, 
that's just what I don't really enjoy about these. And I have worn these and they have held up quite alright. It's Drops Fable I used the yarn. So just a cheap commercial sock yarn. Um, they have felt it slightly, they are pilling a bit on the sole. This was white in the beginning, uh, but I think the, the black has bled a little and I have washed them with a pair of hand dyed uh, blue and red socks which still bleed after washing them 10 times. So it's now kind of a dirty grey. There are some stains on them. I'm not too precious about these socks. If I'm wearing colorwork socks in shoes, it's usually these, just because I, I'm not too keen on the fit, which is in part due to the heel. This is Scania's very favorite heel, which is partly... So you're knitting tear up, you're increasing for your gusset here. Which I do need. I can't wear a sock without a gusset, so whenever I'm knitting from another person's pattern that doesn't come with a gusset, I will insert one. Um, but yeah, you increase for the gusset, then you do half a shot roll here, and then you do a heel flap, and ret uh, return to the original stitch count and knit the leg upwards. And I really don't like this heel too much. I don't know, my, my feet are very wide, but my heels aren't, and this is just... It, it doesn't sit right on, on my heels, it's just too wide. And then, yeah, whenever I put these on, they are really stretched out, and you can see how loose of a gauge it actually is. So I'm not too keen on them. I might re-knit them, but... I, well, I, I did re-knit them, actually, in a heavier weight yarn, and I do like those socks, but they are just slipper socks for lounging around at home. But they are quite warm and quite nice, but I just didn't bring them out. So, yeah. Not the ideal to get the stitch count for me for a fingering weight sock. So, um, I actually knit another pair in the same manner with the same stitch count, which I... It has just a very simple triangular pattern, which I made up myself. Um, but even in the second sock, I just don't like the fit, so I decided to start experimenting around. And as I said, I absolutely don't enjoy knitting toe up. Um, my, my default is cuff down with a heel flip and gusset. So that's where these socks came from. Two already. Um, so I used contrasting heels, cuffs and toes for them just because I was using leftovers and I only had one 50 gram ball of my main color left. Um, actually, I'm showing you them in the wrong order. Doesn't matter. So um, this sock is what now is my go-to stitch count and way of construction. So I used contrasting heels, cuffs and toes um, I use 2.5 millimeters throughout, which in color work gives me a gauge, uh, with a standard sock yarn, gives me a gauge of 40 stitches per 10 centimeters, which is really tight and which I really, really love. It just gives me a very tight, very warm, very sturdy sock. And uh, it means I need 80 stitches around to get a sock that fits me, which is quite versatile because, well, every stitch count that repeat a 4, of 8, of 5, of 10, you can put on it. So it's quite easy to find patterns that are adaptable to an 80 stitch, uh, <coughs> 80 stitch sock. Or just to make up your own, which I did with all those, which I'm going to show you now. So I had some time charted out uh, these little hearts at the top to put them on a hat, which I did finish, but it doesn't fit anyone, so it's just laying around. Um, and then I used some kind of self patterning yarn as a contrast color, which I quite like the effect of. So it's just spiraling around, very simple. But this was one of the try runs for the 80 stitch sock, and they fit really, really well. So this is from then on, they were actually the second pair. But from the time I decided I really like the fit, this is my go to. So whatever sock I'm knitting, I will adapt to an 80 stitch count, or just, as I said, make up my own, as I did with these. The Purple background yarn is Drops Fable again. This slightly variegated contrasting color is Alana Grossa, I think. And the, the white for the hearts as well is Drops Fable. And the self patterning I used in the middle for the spiraling part. It's just simple, cheap sock yarn from Aldi or Lidl. I have no idea where, but one, one of those food stores, cheap food stores, they do sometimes carry yarn here, which I always stock up, <coughs> stock up on. Because it's cheap and sturdy, and why not? They usually have quite fun colors. So, these socks are actually the first ones I did with the 80 stitch count. They were just, 
I had at some point charted out these little thistles, which you will have seen if you watched my episode on the half-finished thistle cardigan, which still isn't finished. It still needs charting for more than 300 stitches. I will do it at some point. I have designed other switches in between. But I will do it, but that's where I charted out the thistles for. In the first place, that was these socks. Um, so yeah, they, they started just by the, the idea of doing something with the thistles. And so yeah, I decided I wanted thistles and I wanted brown colors just because thistles tend to be around wooded areas, well grasslands as well, but I think of these as my thistles in the woods socks, which is the name under which I will at some point publish the pattern if I can get around to having a test net, but it's written up already in the first draft version, I just need to have a test and put it out there, uh, which also applies to the next pair of socks I'm going to show you. But yeah, I just, the thistles are 10, 10 stitch repeat, so there's 8 of them around, then this striping section is a 4 stitch repeat, a 5, 4 or 5. I think four. I'm not too sure. It's a repeat. Maybe five. Well, it has to be five. I have no idea. Well, it's a shorter repeat anyway. So, simple construction. Did a bit of cuff. I usually do 20 rounds on my vanilla socks and 15 on my uh, colorwork socks just because I do a shorter leg on the colorwork socks as well. So they don't go up to where my, my cuff starts getting wider. Um, so they fit me quite well. Then, yeah, just I did a gusset here which has a different patterning but uh, I did some kind of checkerboard effect on these. Usually I just do striped gussets. And I really like them. I haven't worn them yet at all because I want to keep them nice and shiny in case I actually get around to publishing it and need to retake the pictures. But they were just fun and they were a fun experiment in, des in design as well. So I really like my thistle socks. Which brings me to the next pair which might be my favorite pair of colorwork socks, which I haven't worn as well so far, um, which are these, my fish and seaweed socks. My best friend bought me some uh, Mondim yarn by Rochasaria from a trip to Lissabon. So the, the, this is a very, very dark navy, and this is just the yarn dyed. So it's all Portuguese, super uh, non-super washable, um, no nylon in these, and just smells so nice and cheapy. And this green is one of their hand-dyed colors. I, they do work together with, with a dyer, but I don't know her name. So yeah, these were just... I knew I wanted fish in these, so I sat down and charted out a little fish. Um, which I'm actually quite happy with. And um, then I knew I wanted to include the, the green as well. I wanted all three colors in them. And I decided, well, if I have fish, I need seaweed. And to me, this pattern on the top looked like just kind of stylized seaweed. Um, I don't even know if I looked it up in a book or just drafted it. I might just have sat down and scribbled on a piece of paper. I have no idea. And then uh, I decided so close to the screen pattern, I really preferred the cuff to be white. But then I wanted the toe and the heel to be green just to repeat the color throughout. Um, and because there's always one white row in between the rows of fish, I also needed one white row in uh, in the sole pattern. And this time I decided to do a difference between the instep and the sole, just because I didn't think the fish would look nice on the bottom. I just wanted something different on the bottom, so just maybe the ocean floor beneath all my fish and seaweed. But I did repeat the, the seaweed pattern all around at the toe, just because I didn't think a change in, in striping color but not in pattern would not look nice and I'm really really happy with these. They are currently in test knitting, at least with one tester where I know is actually working on them. Um, they might come out sometime next year and I really want to get my hands on some more of this Mondem yarn. It's just so nice. It, it really feels quite sturdy even though there's no nylon in it. I wouldn't wear these socks in, in shoes for long walks though because in shoes, I'm generally really, really hard on my socks, so I wouldn't trust these on long hikes or anything. But they feel quite sturdy, and I really look forward to wearing them after the pattern maybe has been published. I don't know. 
all of my patterns will be free for the time being just because of bureaucracy. I can't offer them as paid for patterns right now. Maybe in the, in the future, but so far. If I publish these, enjoy them for free. Which brings me to the last pattern, which is my Christmas Eve socks. And I've actually just published them today. Um, so these are available as a free pattern on Ravelry under the name Christmas Eve Socks. So go ahead, knit yourself a pair. It actually took me less than two weeks to knit these. And I was designing them as I went. So you might actually be <coughs> able to get them ready in time for Christmas. Which is what I knit them for. I plan to wear them... Well, I was planning them, uh, planning to wear them on Christmas Eve. Which is where the main Christmas festivities take place here. And which we were <coughs> initially going to spend with my boyfriend's family. And they are just a crazy bunch of people. I, quite nice, most of them. But just so many of them. So, um... I decided I needed a Christmas sweater, which is still drying, and I will talk about next week. And I needed a pair of Christmas socks, just to keep me th <coughs> keep me going through Christmas, the whole days. We are actually planning on only spending one and a half days with them this year, so this might be one on one of those days. So maybe the full day. Um, but yeah, they are quite fun. I think I really like them, and they were just so quick to knit because it was so easy to memorize the pattern. Um, I decided I wanted green, uh, red and white because they are my Christmas colors. You can only barely see my, my Christmas decorations, but look here. I did even get some of them. These are the silver bells Christmas trees you can find in Ravelry. And um, it's, it's all red and white as well as this starboard tree going with them. So my, my Christmas is completely red and white. So that's what I used for my Christmas socks, obviously. And my Christmas sweater, obviously, is completely red. Um, it's all drops fable, just because I have a huge, huge stash of it, and I like solid colored commercial token for color work socks. Then 15 stitches of ribbing again. The I, I'm not even sure where I got this snowflake pattern from. I think it, I adapted it from one color work pattern in an interweave magazine, but I'm not sure. I know I have a whole page in my notebook uh, scribbled full of versions of it because I know I adapted it from something. Um, and the trees are, I think, from Mary Jane Michael Stone's Scandinavian Knitting Colorwork Pattern book. I'm not sure if I did any modifications to those. But yeah, I just decided I wanted trees, I wanted snowflakes, and to keep it interesting, I alternated background colors. Um, then again, I guess it this time striped in the part um, that had the red background color. And then I didn't want to continue the striping in here because it was only, I think, five stitches more than my 80 stitch count left on each side. And I decided it would work just, just fine if I continued them in white and did a slightly larger um, part of white in between the trees. And I think it turned out quite well. Can't, can't really see that much that it's a difference in stitch count in there. And, yeah, I really look forward to wearing these. And um, I'm obviously working on another pair of color workshops already, but this time from another designer's pattern. But, yeah, color workshops are really the main thing I'm designing for myself, just because it's so easy. You have your, your basic recipe for me, 80 stitches, 15 rows of rib, about around 40 rows of leg, um, then a gusset, and I also always come back to the same kind of toe just because it fits me the best. So that's really it, what my color work sock knitting is all about. I, as I said, I barely wear them. I have several more pairs of socks I haven't ever worn in my color work sock drawer. And I keep them separate from my other socks just because my box was overflowing and I had to go somewhere else. Um, yeah. But yeah, they, they are just fun little practice designs maybe. I, I feel like it's really still practicing and I will feel accomplished as someone who designs her own patterns when I, when I get to a point where I actually knit my garments from my own designs mainly. But it's still, it's a lot of fun doing the socks and, and well, I'm always knitting socks, I always need a quick instant gratification project and I always need color work so why not? 
it's a perfect combination. So I think with that, and with the light fading still, still more and more, it's still quite light outside, but for some reason I can't get it inside here. So it's getting quite dark quite early. And therefore, Loki, who is really, really nasty and noisy and destructive today, and I will, will say goodbye for today. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment below. Contact me on social media. Links are below. Um, and I'd, oh, as always, really love to hear from you. Bye.